a few yearling heifers, Holstein heifers, and one red in there. They're just kind of outside here for a little exercise behind our calf barn here. And they only get let out here when we're cleaning their pen, which is once to twice a week, depending on the weather. But it's supposed to get really cold here at the end of the week, so we're kind of trying to get ahead. We just cleaned them up. I just took two out of this group and put them up at the bull yesterday with Mason. So then we got to move a couple back in. So we usually have eight. So there'd be eight like in every double pen. But I got all these straw bales in here. We got to shake these out. We just cleaned this, not the whole thing, but because we didn't have enough room on the spreader for all of it. But we usually leave some bedding pack in the smaller pens. So I got to shake out this bedding. So there, we got them all broke open. Now this straw, this is from our oat straw that we made this summer. I, mean, I suppose if you go back in our videos here someplace and I don't know if that's late July, but when the combine we had out there doing the oats. This is very long, long and stringy. And it's good bedding. It's just, it's not the kind of bedding I want to put under the cows in the barn because of the, you know, maybe if I had to, had a bedding chopper, it would work good. But it's very handy for a place like this. So like if it gets really, really cold, so we're not cleaning pens, I'm able to come down here with a bucket of like eight bales and then maybe break one bale open in each pen or two and just kind of give them a, a fresh layer of some cushion to lay on instead of opening everything up and coming in here with the loader and trying to get some corn stalks in here or big bales in here or something. So it's really handy that we got that all stored in our hayloft. So all I did was went up there with the bucket. I stacked as many as I could on there, which was probably about 12 bales. If you stack them right and you drive slow, I can get them in here, dump them off. I got to break them all open. And I guess the pain in the butt of the whole thing is, is just shaking them out. Because like the straw we had last year, it was oat straw, but it, it was like wheat straw in little bears so if you those uh, and i break those open they you can almost just kick them apart a little bit with your feet in there you know <laughs> it's nice stuff so every year it's different i gotta get a pitchfork and shake all this out now well sometimes what we do is we use corn stalks and with those round bales i don't need a whole bale in here it works but then i have a partial left and i gotta find some place for it this is a little handier for the way things are going here right now Now the really only downside to little squares like this is you got to use so many of them to get any kind of layer going. So in the winter months we want more. In the warmer months we maybe only use about half for the same amount of animals or the same size pen. Simply because it's just there to soak up the moisture. In the winter you got to give them some kind of warmth or cushion besides, which is called the bedding pack. So some places we'll leave some of the manure build up especially when it stays like sub-zero for for like you know weeks on end
we've had winters where the bedding pack gets so high, which is fine for the cattle and everything, where I can't get these gates open. And below these gates, there's probably about maybe 14 inches. And then when that manure freezes and you get a few high spots, you literally can't get it open. And then the little squares really come in handy because you can just toss them over the top of the gates and get your cattle bedded up. But then when it's cleaning time, I can't push the gate in to lock the cattle back. I may have to get some help because we have to start by the door and take the manure away and the gates have to go outward until you get the barn clean. So you might have to have somebody kind of watch the livestock a little bit so they don't run off on you between scoops of manure. So it's kind of a strategy thing. And uh, another thing I was gonna show you guys is here. This is just old scrap iron stuff. And I did this in our other barn too. If you go to, I, I think it's, I don't know if it's called Heifer Barn Tour. Or that we did maybe a year or so ago, but I cemented these in. So we had our forms on here and I stapled a piece of iron that was bent over in there. So that's hanging down into the concrete. And then what I had to do is after we took the forms off and the concrete was fresh, I had to chip out you know so I could get the chain through like this one I got way down here it should have been up here but it's still really good so it's smooth as the wall we don't hook them with nothing they'll never break because they're pretty heavy sometimes the chains will break these gates these are Sioux gates from Sioux Falls South Dakota well this barn we built in in 93 in the fall of 93 all the way to where the hay pile is over there where you see all the the boards on the on the center partition there and then we added on another uh, I think that's 24 feet so it's 24 by 40 we added on in 03 I believe that's for our paternity pen and hay storage we used to have to store some hay up over on that side so you kind of get the picture here so if I get up a little higher you can see kind of how things are set up in here a little bit then our wean calves start out over there and as they get bigger we just keep rotating them down. I got this divided into the six pens, but we're using it like four pens. We got two double pens at end and in this end. So what I have done in the past, see here, I got these two gates tied together so I can split this pen if I need to. And if I needed to contain an animal or even artificially inseminate her, you know, like one of these heifers came of age and I can actually sandwich her in between here and adjust it with the chain to this gate. It works very well, very well. And then I'm a small person, so I can climb down in there along the post. She can't back up to me because that's the narrow end. This would be the wide end. It works really great. Never planned it. it just happened to be there like that. So it's amazing how those things work out. Even my openers here, how I put these little turning devices, got a little piece of chain. And I, I suppose I can open one up here to demonstrate a little bit. See how that works. And that's just all, yeah, some of it's used lumber, used steel even. And then I got a little hook on top there. I mean, I even thought at one point, maybe you don't want it to open the whole way, just a little bit. But typically in this barn lately, it's been either they're open the whole way or they're completely shut. stuff is like two feet deep. I'm gonna show you my fork here. Used to be a four prong, one prong missing, and I just love it. Now we got another four prong fork, got all four prongs on yet, this is a little older too. I'm actually serious to think of cutting one prong off because this works way better. It's a little bit wider. Most of the three prong forks are kind of narrow. 
which they work good too. This one just balanced just right for some reason. Amazing how that works out. Something that's actually broke that works out better than it was when it was new. What's gonna happen here? There's a lot of grass in this straw and you can kind of see there those heifers are kind of picking through it and this it was young grass you know when you made the oats it was still pretty young growth little greens in there and i suppose i remember back in 88 when it was so dry even the straw we fed to the cattle and it was really good it was really shiny and nice you know it didn't get no rain on it, it was short so the little straw we did have my dad's like we're not going to use that for bedding we're going to feed that so we fed it we mixed it with the baled hay for the young stock and the dry cows and they gave every crumb up it was just when it's that nice you know and what happened with this stuff I ended up getting a little bit of rain in it and to get that rain out again it wasn't you know humid and stuff so it wasn't so great but so it makes good bedding for here uh, we're gonna see if we can get these other guys to get back in here for us without too much of a fiasco seems like you give them about a half hour out here they've had about enough you know usually uh in the spring of the year when you get some real nice warm days we'll leave them out a little longer come on bud come on bud come on come on bud come on It's a lot easier to lure cattle than to try to force them into a certain direction. See, then on the end gate here, I have a U-bolt. And here on the other side, you can see the bolts. I mean, we could have put some concrete hook, you know, hook in the concrete here too, or had it stick up. But what I did learn to do through experience is always put the gate hook a little higher so when the cattle put pressure on the gate it actually tries to lift it up instead of the hook lower where it actually then it forces it down so it takes the pressure off the hinging if there happen to be some pressure put onto it it actually wants to pull it upward it's just little tricks that help preserve things a little better because there seems to be two kinds of gates the ones that are on hinges and the ones that are broke off the hinges and it's usually some kind of skid steer or loader or something that ends up making that happen. But we started buying heavier hinges. And then what I'm going to do here probably tomorrow is I'll have to get back in here with the fork and throw it all away from the edges because by the time they get done stirring around in there, they kind of end up pushing it under all the gates and everything. And then it's pretty firm down and it's where it belongs and it's good for a bunch of days. Just kind of to help preserve the bedding longer, get more use out of it. And here we got our feed alley. We'll give these guys a bale of straw too. So far it's been a warmer winter and it just seems like it's hard to keep these pens dry. It seems like we're bedding and cleaning a lot. The winter ain't over yet. And I kind of like that. I like just tending the cattle where it's not really even that much work. It's just time. You got to give them some time to add a little bedding and push up their hay. And it just keeps a very close eye on your livestock. When you do that, it's so much better than dealing with something that is sick, you know, because you maybe neglected things a little bit or you, you didn't realize. I'm more than happy to do this. This is to me, this is kind of relaxing. It's not, it's nothing that has to be done exactly at a certain time of the day, but it does need to get addressed. So this is what you call a bedding pack. It's already over a foot deep here. And then down along the mangers and stuff there, we, we usually clean that out. 
it's a little tight to get in here at the skid steer, but it's usually only one or two bucket loads. And, and when a person does stuff like this and takes their time doing it, you get to know your cattle very well. You get to know what's normal and what's not. Now I'll show you what we got in here that was born the last several days here. This one here I found yesterday, a little bull calf. And this one here is about a week or so old now. And I got a couple Holsteins back there. And actually the white one's way younger than the little black one. It's amazing how their size makes a difference and how fast they'll grow, but they're all pretty healthy. So we've still got the moms in this pen yet. I just cleaned them out. We just bedded things up here before we started filming. And uh, they're out there outside. They're getting a little sunshine in, in the snow. So in a, a day or so, those moms will be going up to the dairy barn with the rest of the herd. Basically, that's a rundown of what's been happening in the calf barn today. The extras we do. Once or twice a week, we give these cattle a little extra attention with all that. Look who's in here. Look who came in here. I was looking for you this morning. Moms, they want to get back with their with their calves. So we're going to do that. They've probably been out here long enough. Got to get out of their way before they just run me over. So this is the first calf half of this one. And that one, I believe it's her third calf. That's a really nice cow. And those calves, that's Jersey put into a Holstein. I'll do a little just to mix things up a little bit. Sometimes it's just getting something pregnant. The Jerseys are more fertile. There's maybe more reason why we use it, but. I like to cross things up a little bit. We're trying all kinds of things that way. 